Former jury coach going to jail for 10 days for rape. A former jury tennis coach, Marco Boscovic, will spend a day or two in jail after a jury sentenced him on Tuesday for raping a student in May. According to court documents, Boscovic and the woman were both jury students at the time it happened, after they left the party together. Other news in the Ozarks, voters reject a tobacco tax that would fund early childhood education, a proposal to raise the tax on tobacco and use the revenue to help fund early childhood education and health initiatives, was rejected on Tuesday. If it passed, it was expected to raise around $300 million and Springfield could have received up to $13 million to help fund preschools. In election news in Missouri, Mizzou student arrested with related threat. A senior on the at University of Missouri posted a threat on social media early Wednesday because he was upset over the Donald Trump victory on Tuesday's election. Police arrested him for suspicion of misdemeanor harassment. He was later released on $500 bond. Old people fall a lot, which was this case in this man's fall. On Sunday, 75-year-old James Wright nearly drowned from falling off a bluff at Stockton Lake while fishing at Roark Public Use Area. Wright is now recovering in a Springfield hospital. Now for your weekly foot report. Man shot in the foot in Springfield, and police are now looking for him. It happened around 7 p.m. on the 1400 block of North Middleton. The man who was shot was rushed to the hospital and is expected to make a full recovery. Police have not released a motive for the shooting. And now to Cam with sports news. Some pro athletes are very upset about the election. Colin Kaepernick did not vote in the presidential election. He said it was embarrassing to watch that these are our two candidates. He is still kneeling during the national anthem. Anti-Trump protests invade Thursday night football. As the Ravens and Browns game was kicking off, a crowd of anti-Trump protesters blocked off the entrances of M&T Stadium. Donald Trump is now calling for the riots to stop. In other sports news, Steph Curry sets new three-point record. Steph Curry recently broke the single-game three-point record with 13 against New Orleans. And in soccer news, Bosnia striker Eden Zeko got a red card for pulling a Greek opponent's pants down during the World Cup qualifier on Sunday. And in hockey news, Detroit Red Wings break a five-game losing streak and get their first win in Philadelphia since 1997. I'm Casey Way Casey, and I'm here with your local Springfield news. First off the clipboard is the anniversary of Springfield's own Cox Hospital, which celebrated its 110th birthday on Sunday. Originally known as Burge Deaconess Hospital, it operated as a Methodist medical facility until it fell into financial trouble in the 1940s. It was saved from closure by Springfield businessman Lester E. Cox and was renamed in his honor. Now Cox Health owns five hospitals in the Ozarks area, as well as several urgent care clinics. Next up is what's on everybody's mind this season, fall celebration. Well, far from the usual pumpkin spice everything, there are several fall festivals scheduled around the Ozarks that are sure to bring some fun and nostalgia back to fall. Some events coming up soon are the Frisco Trail Fall Craft Show on November 19th, the Rosewood Christmas in the Ozarks Festival November 7th through the 13th, and the St. Agnes Cathedral Parish Bazaar on November 13th, just to name a few. The police were called to a car fire outside a house where a woman had died under mysterious circumstances almost exactly a year ago. Police found no leads on the previous case, but do not believe that the car fire and death are related. No arrests have been made so far in either investigation, and deputies have said that the fire was not suspicious, likely caused by an electrical issue that ignited a gasoline line. That's all for your local Springfield News on this Monday. Now over to Reese Koyama with the latest buzz in pop culture. Thanks, Casey. Hey, Chiefs. This is Reese Kuyama with Pop Culture. In gaming news, we have some major game series returning. First off, we have Watch Dogs 2. The first game was pretty bad, but this is apparently going to be better, including a better story with a main character called Marcus Holloway. In the game, he joins a hacker group to expose corruption in the San Francisco Bay Area. Sounds promising, but no promises. Next up in gaming news, all Final Fantasy fans all over the world are happy. Coming to Xbox One and PlayStation 4 is Final Fantasy 15. The 10 year in development game project that's been delayed twice now is right around the corner. Our main protagonist in this game is Noctis and his three friends, Ignis, Prompto, and Gladio. This Final Fantasy thing is probably new for a lot of you, but others have been sticking with the series for a span of over 29 years. Also in Final Fantasy news, Conan O'Brien and Elijah Wood played some Final Fantasy 15 on Conan's Clueless Gamer. Let's, like, let's take a look. This game should be called Wait for Your Death in Real Time. I'm getting further and further away from my car. 
wise to rest up before we set out. Good thing we hey, had that wait, cool wait. intent in our Where leather jacket. Where did they jacket. get all this gear? And the, the chips? They got a bag of chips? Looks like a blast for the Final Fantasy community. Have you been sad since you heard Silent Hills PT was cancelled? Well now, the Resident Evil series is making that experience in there. New game, Resident Evil 7 Bow Hazard. This new game takes place in an abandoned mansion. You play as Ethan in a search for his lost for life. Sounds like we're going to get a new look at horror in Resident Evil. Next up, we have Cam with sports. <laughs> Hello everyone, it's Cameron Emling here with some sports news. Up first, we have news that Chicago Bears wide receiver Alshon Jeffrey has been suspended four games for violating the NFL policy on performance enhancing substances. Jeffrey stated that he took substances for inflammation and didn't realize that there was an ingredient that was banned by the NFL. Jeffrey also made a statement saying he is sorry to Bears Nation and he will work to earn back the trust of the fans and his teammates. Up next, we have news coming out of Tampa Bay that Mike Evans will end his protest against new president-elect Donald Trump. Evans sat during the national anthem during the Buccaneers game against the Chicago Bears on Sunday. Evans said that he is sorry to veterans and military men and women that he offended and that he will stand with his teammates next week. Evans then said that he will find other ways to communicate his message. Our last story today is about rookie Phenom Ezekiel Elliott, who has turned himself into to a MVP candidate. However, the NFL is continuing to investigate into the claims made by Elliot's ex-girlfriend, Tiffany Thompson, who posted pictures on Instagram and posters on her body that she says are from Elliot. Elliot continues to deny the allegations against him in five different incidences, but the NFL has said they will thoroughly continue to investigate the case. That's all for The Signal, and we'll see you next time.